watching or listening? It's both actually. So Okay. All right. I am Mike Mangini and you're listening and watching Linya Rock. Hi, Mike. Hi. Welcome to Linear Rock. Thank you for having me, Barbara. Great to see you again. And we're here to talk about a new event that we'll see you in Italy pretty soon, which is called Dramageddon. So let's go straight into it. Um, what makes Dramageddon like a standout experience, you know, compared to all other kind of masterclass and clinics, yours and none. What makes this extra special are two things. First of all, how personal it is. I mean, my, my growing up, I could never get close to people I really just wanted to talk to and learn from, more than just me. But to have the opportunity to spend a lot of personal time is, is pretty special. Even with a meet and greet, you know, you, people do VIPs. You come in, you say hi, the signature, and boom, bye, see you later. This is extraordinary, but what makes it so special is that all the years I've been educating, I have really, really been trying uh, harder and harder and harder to make these concepts that will save anybody a decade at least, but definitely years of time. Very simple and broken down so that I could explain them to you if you weren't a musician, even the most advanced drum thing. And I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you would understand it. And if you're in the class, I actually physically can adjust people. That's what's different than a drum clinic. In a drum clinic, I weigh up on the stage, I perform, I answer some questions, but there's so many people. This is a small group. And here's the extra special thing, the last thing, is that when people are in a small group, they feel differently because they don't feel alone. They see other people have the same questions. And they also watch how I solve these problems for each person. And it's guaranteed, it, 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 it works, it works every single time. So you, be, you become confident, you become knowledgeable, and it's not just you, but when you see someone else go through it, it's a different mindset, because you're, you're, you're perceiving someone else that could not do something, and 30 seconds later, now they understand it and can do it. So that's what, why this is so extraordinary, outside of the fact that I'm right there, and even though I'm largely on pads and I'm on a small drum kit, I can I can speak about these intimate drum parts that people are curious about. It's so much fun. So explain why this is uh, very suitable, you know, also for non-musicians. Uh, of course, fans of music, but that maybe, you know, don't play drums or any other instrument. Well, first of all, if they do play another instrument, the same principles that, um, that, that I have as a drummer, as far as how my hands work, let's say, or my limbs, like strong and weak, applies to a guitarist with downstroke that's strong and upstroke that's weak, or a bassist with one finger stronger and weaker than the other, or their left hand. You know, I have these, um, this rhythm knowledge system that I'll be bringing with me, and it relates to everybody. So that's the first thing, is all musicians that play are human beings, so they have strong and weak sides. But here's the unbelievable thing, is that if someone's not even a musician, let's say, and you know this, I think you know this, where most people do not bring progressive music to parties, or it's not that popular on the radio, like, if you're at a party with people, you just want to hear music that makes people move. You want to hear that ACDC beat, you know, that heavy stuff, that Zeppelin, simple structures, and people relate to this, you know, or pop music. Pop music, you know, it's just straight. 
progressive music doesn't translate, but with just, I'd say about um, less than five minutes in my class, definitely less than five minutes, I teach a pattern recognition system where a person can feel on and even hits. And the way that I do it, I won't get too much because I'll give you a brief answer, is that I teach the system, it's under five minutes, and when you hear it, you can then rec you start to recognize rhythmic patterns that you could not process before. And this is incredible because there are professional studies by uh, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, preeminent, uh, incredible college. They tested the human brain. The human brain does not show up to, to, to this world with a specific part of the brain wired for polyrhythms, essentially the stuff that's in progressive music. And people claim that, oh, I don't, oh, I get it, or I just don't like it. But this is not what the college proved. The scientists, yeah. they proved that they proved that people don't like the feeling that they can't process it. They just can't do it. This is why you, you don't hear crazy progressive music at a big party sometimes, like or at a dinner, at a dinner party or something. You just hear simple beat music. But the stuff I teach in less than five minutes, now your brain is wired. I figured out how to do it. It's absolutely amazing. Of course, you're a drummer, very well known one. Um, but why this name, you know, Drumageddon, which sounds pretty strong and such like a menace in a sense. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I didn't make the name up. My Italian team did. So, uh, so, so uh, Marco and Roberta are behind the scenes, and I believe Marco uh, conjured that up out of his mind. Um, but it is, it makes sense because, it, first of all, the name Drum Again sounds like you know, it's a big drum thing. It means that I can evolve this thing I'm doing, it can evolve into anything that's about drums and me playing. Uh, and communicating to people, but it's earth shattering. It's, it's, um, it's what it is I'm giving to people that they receive. That's so, oh my gosh! Like it's, it had to have a name like that because okay. the because the, you know, the systems are so powerful. It's just un, it's unbelievable, and it's a hundred percent effective. Everybody that comes feel strongly like this and that's drum again it's like hey listen this this is bigger than just the drums this is for all musicians this is for people and it is uh, it, it's really powerful how new is this concept this kind of event for you have you been doing this like for for a few years now or it's pretty new well it it it's both it's a very <laughs> well, it's a, well it's a very old concept of master classes because I used to do drum clinics, and if a place couldn't host a drum clinic, then I would just host a master. They would host a master class, and I, I would come in and, and speak to a small group of people. And I learned at Berkeley by teaching in this environment, this small group environment. I really learned how to get better and better and better. So it's an old concept uh, or an old thing but I've developed it into a much greater concept where there's a little bit of my performing things, you know, very intimately for people. There's hands-on coaching, and it's a very broken down thing. Like I'm putting all of my knowledge into this, this amount of time. And so I used to not do that. I used to just answer questions. I just, okay, what do you have? But now I'm doing both. I've weaved in my concepts with with answering questions to make it very personal so that's so that aspect is new so you're the center of it but of course uh, every every single event is different because of the people attending uh which of course uh, makes it develop different every time but what's your goal with dramageddon i mean for yourself and from the audience point of view, what do you want people to get out of it, you know, and bring it home? Oh, I know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it's in my heart. My goal 
is to provide um, uh, methods for people to improve at anything in life in a very short amount of time by learning critical thought, really learning how to solve problems. You see, because when I'm in the class, I'm solving people's issues, and everyone has some unique things to say. And there isn't an issue that can't be solved because the nature of my methods are based on how a human person works. It's all based on tested science, cognitive, not just any science, but scientific method. That's different than just regular science. Scientific method means tested. Um, yeah. there's, there's data, there's all kinds of proof. So I'm giving to them an opportunity to I I experience how to solve issues, but namely as a musician. That's, that's how we all relate to each other is through instruments. So, I, and I'm going to save them 10 years of time. I said that before, and it's not a joke. It's not a joke. I've taught, I've taught many people around the world that, that I made believe could could do the things that I do if they worked hard enough. And it's true. It's, it's true. Well. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, everybody's unique, but if let's just say it's speed. I've yeah. taught plenty of people how to achieve the speed. If it's pattern recognition, I've, t I've taught plenty of people how to do this. If they want to work at it as hard as I did, then they can achieve things. That's all. Yeah, as in everything, you know, if you work hard, you you can, you know, reach good levels. <laughs> yes, but may, may I add to that? This is, I'm so happy you said that because one special thing that I do that's so important to me is I make it clear that even if a person works very hard, they could potentially be practicing something dangerous or practicing something that will hurt them, or practicing something that's not going to work, or practicing something that's going to make it even more difficult for them to achieve something special. So I, I can see it. I can Because I'm watching them. I can see their eyes, their head movements, their hand movements, their body, their feet. I can see through their eyes what they're thinking most of the time. And I'm usually pretty, pretty, pretty good at, at getting that right. But I ask them. And so that's what's what's extra special is, yes, a person can work hard, but most of us don't do the right things. We don't know. And so yeah. we keep practicing over and over a technique that never really works. And these people are probably paying me because they're paying, okay? But what are they paying for? Why would you pay me this money? The reason you would pay me, and I, I would pay the money to anybody that would save me all of this time. I would pay this money to somebody that would give me so much. You know, you pay money, you should get something really special for it. And what is actually incredibly special is I can catch all of these techniques and approaches that I know don't work and I can, I can prove it, I can show it, I can demonstrate it, and then I can speak to the person. It's incredible. Now, that's why I'm so excited. And about hard work and achievements, um, I know that you have a couple, you know, of Guinness records uh, as the world fastest drummer, hands and feet. How that came about? Was it a challenge, you know, with yourself, something you wanted, you know, some way to achieve or needed to achieve, or it simply happened, you know, that somebody measured what you're capable of. Well, it's a little bit of, of, uh, of, of circumstance. Here's how, it, you asked me how it happened. Here's how it happened. I was at a NAM show in California and I was walking around with Dennis Chambers, the great, the great Dennis Chambers. And Dennis had seen the booth where they had this thermometer device. So we were walking and he said, hey man, you have to go try this thing. And I said, no. I said, no. Oh, really? No. Yeah, I said, no, I'm not. i like, what's, who cares? You know, it's like, I, I whatever. And he goes, no. What'd you say? Like, no. And then you look at Dennis. Dennis is this big guy. Uh -huh. I mean, and he look, he hasn't intimidating. He's like, you're doing it. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> 
So he dragged me over there. I had to be dragged over there. And I, 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 I sat down and just, you know, tried it. And I, I realized I realized two things. It didn't matter how many notes I, I, I got. I realized two things. That this was an incredible tool to help people out. To just practice, you know, if you wanted to achieve some more speed. I think it's a great thing to try to get better. But this can be dangerous for people. They should be very mindful of who's teaching them uh, and what they're being taught. Because I didn't know everything about all the muscles and the motions and the and the stressing and the flexing. and the, I didn't know about all this stuff. Because when I tried that drumometer the first time, I knew. I was like, wow, people are going to get hurt trying yeah. to like be the fastest drummer. And, all. and it's not, I mean, if, if you want to do that, good for you. I think it's great that people want to be great. I really do. But um, yeah, it's a little bit dangerous. And um, it's not the same. Because if you notice, the, the great drummers of the world all have great gigs that mm -hmm. they play. They play music. Those are the greatest. Yeah. And, and you know, if, if, if someone's so concerned with all this other stuff, then um, I don't know. I don't know anymore. You know, maybe this day and age, it, it it's going to work because there's more music that requires very fast playing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, sure. So so so. But so. was that done in both records in one take or? Uh... Yeah. Oh my God! So it was like. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. one day, like just... just just sitting down. You know the. Uh, when I when I played the feet for fifteen minutes. My feet, my feet aren't great, you know. Um, again, that's why I do these classes. I found an unbelievable foot system. My foot speed has gone way up just from very, very little practice. I used to work so hard at it, but the harder I work, sometimes I got slower because I was hitting, I was hitting too hard. Because I'm a, I'm a rock drummer. I'm a big bass drum, big sound, big you know drum head moving yeah. bass drum player. I'm not the guy. I mean, but now that I learn how to do it, I guess I could be, because I can. I can go pretty, pretty good. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> but when I did it the first time for 15 minutes, it was the morning. I had on dress shoes, like with with big heels on them, and so because I'm a short guy, so I so had some like bigger bigger heels on them, right with the dress shoe. I and and you know they said sit down and, and do this for 15 minutes and help us out. Am I like, okay? As I was trying to promote promote the <clears throat> the goodwill. See, because the yeah. drumometer guys, uh, Boo has goodwill. He's a good guy. He was trying to help people learn. He wasn't into ever the, the ugly stuff with it, you know, because some, some, sometimes people got a little funny with this, but, um, uh, and, and not many, but anyway, uh, they, I sat down, so I just, I just like, I made one foot just go like, and then I made my other foot go, and I just was like, for 15 minutes, <clears throat> and it was, it was clean, it was messy, it was clean, it was messy, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, uh, so, okay. yeah, so, and then I, I I did all of those, but I couldn't, I uh, I, I didn't set the minute record with feet. I, I never did that um, because I, I'm really, again, I'm not that kind of player uh, so much. I put more of stamina with this like speed that I could hold for a very long time. But with yeah. my hands, yeah, with my hands, it's different. I did the whole, you see, wait a minute, one other thing. I didn't start my first, this this WFD record with the drumsticks. I did it with my bare hands because I was, you know, 30 years ago, I was teaching a lot of people how to hold their hands like this mm -hmm. to get power, to get power out of their bare hands and how to use a, a bare hand on, on, on different surfaces, you know, a okay. towel, a towel, rubber, floor tom, uh, a desk, um, you know, holding the thumbs back and forth, all kinds of different power, power strokes. And then also... Using using muscles to 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 shake the hands like this. Uh, if you I mean, if you look at the Italian drummer Riccardo Merlini, he studied with me quite a bit, and so mm. you 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 can actually see you can actually see these things I'm talking about. You know, with 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 a bunch of a bunch of people out there. You know, and some of these guys have really worked hard. I'm I'm so very impressed. You know, 
uh, with, 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 with the passion uh, that so many people that have come into my life have. It's, it's really cool, really cool to see it. But anyway, anyway, I refused to do the drumstick record at, at first, I, I I tried. I was like, no, people are gonna get hurt, man. So I, I did the bare hands, um, okay. and then and then after I got comfortable, feeling like I wouldn't hurt myself, going all out. Then I did the one minute with traditional grip. I did it with match grip, and then I left it alone. I just stopped doing it. Okay. You're going to be back, as we said, to Italy uh, for quite a few Dramageddon experiences, let's call it like that. Um, and Italy has always been a special place for you, starting, you know, from the origins of your family, if I'm correct. Yes. What, where is your family from exactly? Um, two of my, my grandparents are from uh, Isolo Deliri. Mm hmm but all four are from Latium. Um, my, um, my DNA, <laughs> <laughs> my, my DNA is, is, is all from, from, from this area, you know, in, in, in Latium. And then some of my DNA is, is, goes east through the, through Croatia with the Baltics, Greece, and then into, um, uh, into the Middle okay. East you know, a little bit. So what I think happened, honestly, which is funny, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I looked at the places in my, my, my DNA and it made a line. My, you know, the, it, it made a line. And it's yeah. interesting because I don't know where I had seen this before, but then it, uh, I, I got reminded from studying world history that this is the path of the, I think it's the 800 year war. So what I think happened is I think some gladiator from Rome went and found some, some incredible woman and carried her back from, from a faraway place and started yep. the Mangini, started the Mangini family and the Spinelli families in, uh -huh. in, in Latium. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Um, are you also a cook? Which is your favorite Italian dish? Well, I'm a cook in that I used to cook for myself for years and years and years. Um, and I just learned. I, and I, I would watch my mother. But I'm not, a, I'm not a, a special cook. Like, I couldn't get a job as a cook. But um, I, cook, I cook a lot, a lot of things, different things. But my favorite Italian dish, linguine alla vongole. Okay, oh that's classic. A classic, okay. Oh, oh, my favorite white of uh, garlic, garlic and nice, nice oil. Uh huh. So good. And and <laughs> and, and and some allegrini amarone. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 oh perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know it's red wine with, 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 with the white wine dish, but I don't care. Those are, those, that's it. That's it right there. That is it. <laughs> now, I was asking, you know, because it's curious, you know, in Italian, um, dish is piatti, which is also symbols in Italian. So there's a connection. That's why I was asking, you know. For us, food is very important. It's like a symphony, so... <laughs> Yeah, you know, interesting. The first time that I went to Italy, which was with an Annihilator in 1993, yeah. which was so much fun. I will never And I was there in yeah, Milan. <laughs> I, I will never I will I I remember that. I remember the show. I remember seeing people like I I like, "Oh my gosh." Um uh they charge, I think was, no, 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 it wasn't that one where they charged the stage and to try to take my drumsticks. I'm like, no, no, I don't get these for free. I only have, I only have so many. No, 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 you can't have my drumstick. But um, I remember when I went there distinctly, I distinctly remember watching the way that Italians, you know, real homegrown Italians, preferred the, their sandwiches and things and that's exactly they were eating the way i did my whole life and i okay. was never there like just from genetics where 
where I like, I don't like mayonnaise and gush all over my sandwich. I hate it. I hate it. I, I like the good, the good bread with, with, with the prosciutto in there yeah. and, may, and maybe a cucumber and stuff, so, uh, a piece of cheese. I went to Italy and that's exactly what they were eating in, in the auto grill. If you go to the auto <laughs> yes. grill, you know, I'm like, look, it's, it's me. So I, yeah. fe I, I felt, I felt connected in a very special way. Yeah, the panini. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. So since you mentioned Annihilator, you know, Annihilator Extreme, G3 with Steve Vai, Mike Visconti, Dream Theater, of course, among all other things that you've done. Yeah. Um, within your huge artistic path as a drummer, which gig, you know, gave you the most in terms of Uh, le learning something uh, which turned maybe to be a huge insp inspiration in your playing. Um, let's put it like that, a sort of electric shock, you know, more than everything else that you've done. Oh my, there's so many special things from each situation, including the latest jam I did with Corey Wong, who's a, uh, a funk guitarist so people don't know yeah. I have, people don't know but my sister used to give me Motown records to learn when I was seven years old you know I, and I have a whole huge history of jazz before I answer the question people people should read my actual bio I don't think anybody mm -hmm. goes goes to my website and actually reads about my my history my young history so here's an answer to your question one of the things that sticks out to me happened when I was in extreme and here's mm. the reason and here, here's the reason Here's the reason. I had a massive background of swing. Successful. I was a competitive, competitive jazz drummer in, in high school. I made I was the all-state drummer and I won I won all the, the positions and I, I, I in the contest. So I was pretty good, at least as high school goes. I like won everything. So that was that was a sign that I could at least play okay, you know, pretty good, this, this style. I so believe I, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I, but, we, but when you don't play something all the time, you know, it's like you, you, you can lose some of the finesse. So by the time, um, you know, when I joined Extreme, um, I, I had just come out of all of, you know, the, the Annihilator thing, and it was really immersed trying to play the notes as perfectly as I could, which has its own feeling if you play yeah. to the grid. So I started to get studio work because I could play, you know, right on the grid. They didn't have to edit me. I did sessions that maybe, 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 maybe I, I had to punch in like two, three notes for a five minute song, or maybe, you know, come in at the end of the song, which bothered me I, as I wanted to play the whole song in one shot. But anyway, anyway, with Extreme, what I, I took out was there was this this feel that that, that um, the guys were looking for, and Nuno in particular, there was kind of a laid back thing where he was trying to tell me like a drum fill that rushes is like the worst, you know, and if you got to lay it back and let it breathe. And so there's a specific identifiable feeling for certain types of grooves and certain types of music. And, um, you know, I, I, I got... I got back into that um, from my experience with Extreme, regardless of any and all the recordings I did afterwards that, you know, because engineers do their thing to it. This was what happened. So um, you know, some of them, for some of them, you can hear a little bit of this. Some of them you can't. It depends yeah. if it was sound replaced or not and stuff like that. So, um, uh, you know, and some jobs require Mm -hmm. Some just some jobs require the notes to land in an exact spot. That's that's the job, and so it that has its own feeling to it, and some you know whatever, whatever. So the, but the point is, you asked me a question, and I, out of all of that, in in in, in the career, um, just a little bit of a reminder, a little bit of a reminder of 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 what I now look at as the notes between the downbeats. Okay. So it's, Um, and it, 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 incidentally, incidentally, um, I had done a, I had done a recording with Steve Vai and he told me, he said, Mike, you got to put a 54% swing in this. That's what the, you know, the drum program, drum machines doing. He said 54% swing. I'm like, 
and this was this was before um um uh, let's see this was before i ended my whole tenure with steve i because i was there for five years but it was it was after extreme it was mm. after extreme so when he said a 54 percent swing i'm like oh okay i don't know exactly exactly what that is but i know what he means now and so when he played me the 54 percent swing I was able to replicate it by grabbing my stick a certain way. And it's, it, what that sounds like is like, which you can hear is not, it's not perfect subdivisions, but it's not swing either. It's not uh, 66%, like a triplet. It's not that. It's 54%. So it's more closely. It's more, it's more closely related to a perfect half, like 50%, yeah. but it's not quite, it's just a little, it's a little off from it. But I just said, can you please play it for me? So I was able to quickly, very quickly, I guess. You, you know, that's another example of feeling. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a different feeling. And so other, other recordings I've done, you know, they require, I mean, they require me to hit the notes exactly in the middle because there's, there's other notes landing there, or somebody wants to land their notes like dead on, dead, dead on this grid thing. It's like, that's how the composer is writing. It's how the music goes. Like, okay, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. It's all good. Maybe you partially already answered to that, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, of all the albums that you recorded, uh, which one represents your essence the most you know it's like the the summary the cliff notes of mangini's drumming oh the go-to record you know to understand what mangini is all about what mangini drumming is all about well there's no go-to one record that's impossible the, the only, okay uh, my so <laughs> my, my solo albums the only one you can go to to get to get uh, two out of three things, um, you can get out. Of, I mean, you can listen to the whole record. See, not every record I'm on. You, not everyone can listen to the entire record. They don't. They don't like every song. They don't like every everything on it. I don't even. I can't even listen to whole records that I'm on. As I, you know, some I just don't like some things. I like other things. You know what I mean? But on my solo yeah. record, well, I wrote my album, so I. I picked the song, so I like them all. But um, what you get out of that is 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 the spacious, heavy, the, the groove part of it. But you also get the use of my 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 speed and odd rhythm skills in the solo section as music, not as skills, but as music. So you, okay. those are the two things you get out of my solo record, Invisible Signs. But if you want to hear progressive, you. You you you're gonna have to go to to Dream Theater Outcry to you know on the on the dramatic turn of events to to hear, I mean some you know some stuff you're gonna like you know like switching because of, because in, in Outcry in the solo section I'm I'm playing what the band is playing with part of my body and playing something different with another part of my body, so I essentially do this section where. I'm playing what everyone else is playing the normal dream theater way, so I'm dividing it. I'm yeah. dividing it, so it's like okay, I, I I hear the whole band playing time changes. I get it, but then the next time, I start adding stuff with my feet, playing lefty and righty because I but I'm doing these figures. Where I have to play like fast with my my weak foot leading or with my my weak yeah. foot. I don't think it's that weak, but anyway, I have switching them, so that's hard. That's very difficult for I think a general a general drummer. And then I start doing polyrhythms, and then I start at one point I did three things at once, at the end where my feet are following the band, but my hand, um, <laughs> one of my hands was in a completely different time signature in seven, in seven eight, while while uh, the band's going through like eleven. Uh, 11, 8, 15, 14, 3, 5, all these. And I'm, I'm playing those changes, staying in 7. So if they want to hear that stuff, they have to, you know, go go to the DT catalog. If they want to hear me 
use a little bit of the skills in a in, in a in a more popular sound you know uh you, you go to extreme and listen like hip yeah. today that has a bit but there's no there's no one go-to record for all of it because i'm not on all the songs on steve Vai. you go to the fire garden suite i'm not even on the whole thing i thought i was at one time but then i had to go back and go oh wait a minute he's using He's using the drum machine that he programmed for the two middle sections. It's it's not me. It's not that's not what I did. He just like took a piece of it. So um, you know, I don't know. But about invisible signs, um, yeah. you know, it, it seems from what you're saying that it comes, you know, full circle. That um, doing a solo album is like you know delivering. Uh, some of your essence that you haven't done before. Um, why Invisible Signs as a title? What have you been blind, you know, about in the, <laughs> through the years up to now? Oh, yeah. What have I been blind about or what was... Or yeah, what, it's, oh, you know, Invisible. So yeah, now it's yeah. visible, I guess. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> a bunch of things. First of all, and it's all in the record it's in mm -hmm. it's in the it's in the lyrics and it's also in the drumming yeah oh, these things and they're, they're things like there's always there's always more depth to the truth um the truth is not easy to find the truth is not easy to accept that's that's the real thing you know it's very difficult to accept the truth and then what is the truth how do you know it's the truth and what if someone mm -hmm. sees it differently than you do then then you have to you have to know things like the difference between perception and perspective so you know the things i'm blind to or have been blind to i'm blind because they're part of the larger perspective that i don't see because i have my perspective i have my view my world view i'm not seeing the whole thing because i'm not educated enough with certain things to know the whole story i didn't do my homework to know the whole story. I didn't even study what certain words actually mean mm. to, to gain this perspective. People use words all the time and change the meanings. And they change the meanings, why? If you study argumentation like lawyers do, you realize that people change the word meanings without you being aware of it to manipulate your your view. That's what, that's what they see. do. Yeah, you, you, you change the words. It doesn't really mean that. And, or they use words out of context to try to sway you into an opinion. And once, mm -hmm. you, once you see that this is a thing, you step back and go, whoa. You start to see it in all kinds of every aspect of life. You step back and go, wow, wow. Why, didn't I, why wasn't I taught this in school? They didn't even, they didn't even teach me how to own a house they didn't teach me how to have perspective on what are the legal aspects of of health insurance um of of, of property insurance of of relationships of of, of, of taxes to, to living and all of these things that they don't want you to know <laughs> they don't want you to know all these things like they want you to be smart figure all this stuff out and manipulations about it in any way even uh, it doesn't have to be that it could be you know even with music for example with music um i i played a trick and it worked and it worked on my solo album what i did is i made the main drum part so easy to listen to on a phone like if you just hear them on a speaker on a phone out of, out of mm -hmm. you, you anybody could play that a kid and that's what I wanted you see okay. because because I, I wanted I wanted the, I wanted to like a magnet I wanted to pull people in and if they chose to they could put headphones on and really listen and go whoa 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 wait a minute why are those hi hats changing? Why is that right? But wait a minute. A, why is that happening? B, how's that possible? Because mm -hmm. that, that 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 can't just be done. The way I have my drum kit is, you know, ambidextrous righty and lefty. So if I'm switching and people know that my hi hat has to have a foot to operate it, but it's my left bass drum. 
that means I have to be playing fully lefty. It's really difficult to switch back and forth without losing a moment, a moment, a millisecond without losing any time. So if somebody wanted to dig dig deeper, I'm not forcing it on them. It's their choice. Okay. They can hear it. That's a sign. And another sign is listening to what's calling you. For some people, they're not interested in this thing. So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to play a crazy drum part and force people, force people to have to take the time to figure out this this song. In a sense, it's like an, an apparently less is more for philosophy. <laughs> well, not real. Well, I mean, no, I'm gonna look at look 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 at. If if you're going to ask me if I want less amaroni or more okay. amaroni, I want to take more because because okay. more yeah because more is more than less. Less is not okay. more than more. But I think I think people use again. That's a perfect use of the word manipulation. Mm -hmm. When someone says less is more, what are they trying to say? They're trying to tell some drummer that plays a lot a lot of notes musically that no no that's not musical. Less if you play less, you'll be more musical because their because their mind can't comprehend what's even going on. So it must not be good. It must not be musical. It must not be anything but what they want it to be through their yeah. perception so to them less notes is more musical is what they're really trying to tell somebody without insulting them but they are insulting that's an insulting yeah. thing you know I see. it is because who do they who do they think they are who do they what <laughs> because i mean some of this music that that requires a million notes like fits the music and therefore it is musical it is musical because it fits the music they might not like it that's okay that's what they should say people yeah. should say hey you know what i don't like all that stuff it sounds like a machine gun i don't like it okay okay i agree with you in that position i applaud that okay you don't like it so now if you would do, be so kind keep quiet stop insulting people stop making comments and go mind your business if, if you want to be happy, go be happy. But why do you keep coming back saying things? You know, it's a strange mentality. And so this less is more thing is weird. This feel, <laughs> this feel thing is like, it's weird, man. It is so weird because it's like the word is, the word is a, being used to make excuses for like all kinds of things or just something that people like. You know, I, that's fine. But when it's used improperly to insult something, yeah, I'm not that no, I'm not gonna stand for that. Because you can oh, actually yeah, you can actually point out where the error is that everything has feel. Everything. So you can't say it something doesn't have any feeling. You can say you don't like it. That's different. But anyway, so I I'm off on a whole tangent, but this is the kind of thing where let's just say you, you come to the class, all right? Mm -hmm. If, if you came to the class and you asked me to demonstrate what I'm talking about here, it would save me a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, yeah. it, would, it, it would save me a lot of words. And the spirit of it's positive, although because all these things can be, people can have opinions and things get crazy with what you like and don't like and prefer and don't prefer, and, you know. What you, but, you you know, Mike, talking a lot is is very Italian, so that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I but just that. tell me, you know, is this you know solo direction? You know, making solo albums and doing drama garden events and maybe uh, different kind of master classes. The core of your future, or you're open to any gig that somebody may propose to you. I, 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 by default, I am open, um, but um, see, I don't think about the future so much because mm. I know it, I, I know it's based on the present and it will be based. So if, if I do a really great job with all these things I'm doing, that will create its own future and it will be balanced between other things. Um, I may not be able to continue because I might have obligations coming up. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Uh, you know, but in that case, I don't speak about it because, because it involves someone else's business. You know what I mean? Like, okay. it would be, it would be interesting if I were to say, well, uh, I've been, you know, discussing something, you know, doing something with so-and-so and this one and that one, but I would never do that because now I'm revealing their private business. You know, okay. it, it's more like, <clears throat> it's better always to wait 
that something formulated and, and then everyone will hear about this thing or whatever. So here's the other thing about my future. I just want to do a great job now. And what I mean, mm. what, I, but I, what I mean by that is it's like being on stage. You know, those, um, uh, I've done very long shows in my career, basically a minimum of like two hours and 45 minutes with both Steve Vai and Dream Theater. You know, yeah. it, it would, I'd always push, it would always keep pushing and getting a little longer, a little longer and stuff like that. So I'm used to understanding those waters. It's like being on a ship in an ocean, a, a rough, a very rough ocean and navigating, mm. navigating your way through it. So what I found was that I had to live in a moment of about one to three seconds. Because if I didn't focus on those one to three seconds of just about it, you know, plus or minus, then if I thought about a mistake that I made in the past, it would affect my ability to focus and then I would make another mistake. Okay. If, if I thought about something coming up where I wasn't even there yet, I was still in this particular part of the, the, the ocean and the waves were doing what they were doing. If I thought about what was coming in the future, then I couldn't focus on the moment and then I would make a mistake in the present. And then I would make more mistakes and get used to making mistakes. And then everything would be laced with mistakes because I wasn't living in, in that short yeah. moment. So that's what I'm saying. I'm doing the same thing with my career. I'm in this moment looking at, at what I have coming up that's paying me, that's part of something I'm completing. I'm completing a bunch of things that I wasn't able to complete before. Yeah. So, um, and then the other stuff is not to be uh, even spoken about because it's just, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Right now, this is what I'm doing and I want to do a great job doing it. Do we have time for a couple of more questions? Sure. You've been so wonderful letting Thank me, let it, letting me um, change, this, uh, to go off <laughs> the tangents and ruin your interview. <laughs> no, no, it's been very interesting and I'm so happy about it. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, why the drums are, you know, the primal, like the perfect vehicle in music for you? And are you still passionate about drums as day one? Or it some way, you know, became a working tool through the years? How do you balance that? I balance that. That's exactly what I do. I balance that. Um, I'll tell okay. you how. First, first of all, I'm passionate about drums in a way where I need to complete or f fulfill this idea that I have and bring it out into the reality of the instrument. Mm -hmm. when, I, when I cannot do that, then I'm motivated to practice certain things to give me the ability to get that idea out because I'm always progressing. That's the whole point of these systems. Once you start putting the pieces together, you can, you can make yourself who you want to be. <clears throat> these systems aren't about me making people turn into me these systems are about me sharing with people hey look look what i discovered this is what i did with it you can do anything you want so i'm passionate about that i'm passionate that it works i'm passionate to continue to practice every now and then um but it's a work thing so i have to work i have to do video recordings i have to do audio recordings I as I spend more time in this chair than I do on a drum chair. So, oh, there's so much business. I have a bunch of businesses. You know, I have to keep them all going. And um um but I'm passionate about that 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 one thing, that feeling that I'm connecting to the reality of this idea that I have and if I can't do it, I'm upset by that uh so it motivates me and then I, I go practice to complete this little thing like it might be whatever it is so yeah i balance it with life and and why drums are perfect for you as a vehicle well because i talk with my hands <laughs> that's a good point all right very quick question um do you have an ideal lineup 
you know, for an ideal project um, in your mind, which names would you pick, you know, to collaborate uh, with you for the definitive, you know, uh, Mangini project and why? I don't. I, you don't, don't, I don't never. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, when you when you bake a lasagna, and you mix ingredients in different ways, it transforms the whole thing, and then you can't take the ingredients out. I mean, yeah. one too much of this, a little bit of that, too little of this ingredient, a little bit more of this, it changes everything. So if if one variable changes, the other variables change. So Yes, I don't think it's impossible. It's possible to say bang, 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 because you don't know that one, how one variable affects the other. Does that make any sense? It's like a yes, it does. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a chemistry equation, and there are yeah. so many different things. For example, with my solo album, once it formulated, I knew exactly. It's like okay, with, op with the options. I knew who would work and how they would work. It was like, okay, this is going to work. And that's all I needed to know. Okay. Do you have any sort of routine or ritual that you do before taking the stage uh, that, you know, it's something that it's all yours uh, or that you would suggest, you know, to other drummers to do? Yeah, no, I have something that I've been, that I do that I've been teaching uh, and, mm -hmm. you know, all, all these, I have a lot of students out there that are, that are successful. You know, they're all doing things and some, uh, some are full-time musicians, some are not, some do it on the side, but they're, but they're all, when they do this thing, they have an incredible amount of success, um, which is like m most everybody, even if it's just a little bit or a lot. And mm -hmm. that is the routine is I sit and I, I, I focus my primary uh, uh, mission as using my eyes. And so, th but by the way, this works for a blind person. I, I'll get to that in a minute, because I know it sounds like it won't, but I take my eyes and I look at my body and then I do particular things. Like I have, I have systems and mm -hmm. I, I connect all my senses in a very particular way. I, I look at my body, I talk, I talk to it in a specific way and I do motion. So I engage my, Basically, my whole, my soul, my spirit, my um, my body, and my mind. I I I connect the whole me through yeah. through this way. It's not it's not offered as as it doesn't like have a name like that as a system. The whole you, you know, whatever <laughs> it is. But uh, it, it by default, it's what I teach every time I teach anyway. So that's what I do is I I connect to make sure that you know that whoever I am that day, meaning whatever my mechanics are that day, because some days are better than others, you know? Some days we, we work better. Some days we're tired. Some days we are hard. We're just not into it. Some days we're in, you know. With all of that said, this connects me, if that makes any sense. So that's what I do before uh, okay. mo most, most every show, is I, I make that connection. And which is the most embarrassing or goofiest thing that happened to you on stage? And are those also a kind of <laughs> learning lesson for anybody? Yeah, I'm well. I, there might be a list of those, you know. But the, the the most recent one that comes to mind has a level of humor to it. Um, for me, it's humor. For for other people, it's not funny, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, I, that's what I think is funny a lot of times it thinks that stuff that's not supposed to be funny is funny to me anyway that gets me through life as humor uh one of the things that gets me through life is i've been blessed with a lot of crazy silly humor anyway i was on stage and it was the first couple of weeks of uh uh i don't know if it was the the last album dream theater leg i think it was and uh we were playing the Count of Tuscany, which is a which an old it's an old favorite. So now, I, now you got to understand, I'm still acclimating in the first week or so. I'm acclimating to what everything looks like real for real because the rehearsals don't do that. Uh, it's just like a quick run through kind of a thing, really. Most of the rehearsal is spent wiring stuff together. <laughs> there's so many, yeah. there's so many, there's so many plugs and lights and buttons, you know. But um, 
uh, and things. So it was a, it was a, I don't know, I don't remember, a week in or 10 days or that. So at, at, at some level, you know, I'm tied into the, I was tied into the production through a sync, you know, like, like a click sync, the, 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 the timing. So I, ha I have to be perfect. I can't hit a note out of place. It's, it's a whole different level of pressure. It makes it, it makes it a hundred times as hard to do the show. I'll tell you that right now. But I mean, but it's something that I learned how to do. So here I am with this kind of pressure, uh, you know, really paying attention. And one of my microphones, I didn't know, was clamped uh -huh. with, to a cymbal stand. So, so yeah, it, it, it was the beginning of, of the of, of view from the top whole thing um i didn't know that i hit really hard it doesn't look it i know it doesn't but it got a lot of power from a, from like a low height or whatever so I, i'm forcing in i'm li literally crushing crushing this hunk oh, of metal and the stand is like you know vibrating so the microphone was clamped to it eventually you know it it, it, it broke the microphone but before it totally busted it it made a pop sound and it sounded like a click. So when I was playing Count of Tuscany, I was mm -hmm. going into a very, very odd section and um, I heard the click and it clicked. Listen to this. this is, I mean, some people will understand what I'm saying, some won't. It clicked one sixteenth note, one sixteenth note off from where my, my, my beat was, the beginning of this phrase. Yeah, that had that had sixteenth notes in the phrase, like a kind of echo. Yeah, but it went click, and so I'm so used to to doing this kind of a thing. My entire mind and body adjusted everything I was playing. I slipped it one sixteenth note over to match the click that I heard because I thought I was wrong, but when I slipped it over one sixteenth note. The song started to sound wrong, like everybody was playing something, and I, I had like a, a nervous breakdown, kind of a heat, kind of like, oh, wow. And so I just stopped at the break, and I heard uh, I, I heard what was happening in the space that wasn't drums, and I, yeah. I heard it, and then I adjusted to it. It was horrible. It, oh but I, I mean, but there's a lot of humor in that because, and it's an interesting thing, it shows you how susceptible or at least how um, um, what what I'm experiencing back there that that the people don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. And I want to sit there and I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to make an excuse like, well, but I thought it was a the click, blah blah blah. It doesn't matter. The whole place saw me train wreck this. Thing. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, I think it also gives me a, a, an excuse to talk about how to save so to fix that, because you know some bands. It might not be that they're playing to a sequencer or, or a sample, like, you know, uh, something external timing or a click or or they just, you know, they don't have any of that. But some maybe at some point there's a sample hit or, or music, whatever it is, it shows you how, how, that that can be corrected. But it shows you the, how how difficult it is that you hear something pop into your 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 ears Led Zeppelin, Black Dog. I'm always hearing the one in a different place than it. Yeah. Than it really is to the right. Like, you know, I, I did the same thing to Zeppelin Rock and Roll. Yeah. I, I started it on, and then I figured out he came in, in on the end of three, uh, one, two, three, and four, and 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and you know, and go figure. Check this out. You know that the inspiration for that is Johnny B. Good. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. Yes, so what yes. nobody knows, but it's it's that. That's because it's very strange. <laughs> that, and also I read in a book that they were trying to do Black Dog, and he was hearing it, the one in a different place. He got upset and then played mm -hmm. that, like, in the middle of it, and then they just recorded to it or something. I, I don't know. Don't don't listen to me. I just read it in the When the, <laughs> Levy, when the Levy Breaks book. I think that's in there. I, yeah. I, I might be quoting it wrong. But, but the point being that um, I was doing a radio show. I played buckets on a WAF AAF radio show. And because I was trying to communicate to Mistress Carrie, the host, I didn't think that if I counted it coming in on the end of three, like, like and a non-musician is just going to pick up what that even means. So for her, I went, 
I, I knew she would get one, two, three, four, one. All I wanted her to do was 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 understand that the drums came in in between the B. So I yeah. counted it like that. I went one, two, three, four, one, and then played it, and then I corrected the count. But then, you know, she said, "Oh my gosh, we got a million views on the thing," and blah blah blah. So I went, "Oh, that's nice." She goes, "People are really nice." I said, "Okay, I'll go look at it." Of course, of course, I gravitate like right away. There's a comment going. You know that I'm terrible. I counted it all wrong. It comes in on three, not on the end of one. And I'm like, I know. I but it's, like, it's like you can't get away with anything, and, and even if you, it's not meant or you meant something else, the context was different. Wow, the world has gone crazy. Very last thing, you know, about you know hilarious and funny stuff. There's this little joke about the drummer being that guy which hangs out with real musicians. What is your definitive answer to that? Um, <laughs> let me show you what my answer is. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So I decided to become a real musician. <laughs> I, I learned this. No, no, no. <laughs> no that's, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I mean, I mean, you know what though? Um, let's see, let's see. You know how non. <laughs> oh my god! You, you you can tell I really I can't even hold it right. No, never mind. You know, play it like like this. Um, yeah. You know, let's see how these non drummers do with a drummer that doesn't keep very good time back there. Then it becomes important. You know, those speeds up the beat, speed it up, speed it up, whatever. Like you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, but what is was funny is I was so, uh, I, I recorded some gigs with cassette tapes in the day and I couldn't believe how fast I would play certain songs and like rush drum fills. I, I, I really had to, I really had to dig in to try to, yeah. to get to the perspective of these poor people having to play <laughs> in, a band, in a band with me, you know, we, <laughs> going all over the place uh, and, and, and all that stuff, but whatever. whatever. That, that's feeling as well, you know, some it kind of feeling. excitement and right. enthusiasm that you got driven off. <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is. It, it depends on what the, what the musicians intend. It all depends on your intention. I mean, if you have a song and you want it to, to be perceived a certain way, well, then you got to play it a certain way. You know, if you're recording or something, let's say it's uh, the D, a DVD, and it's and it's not about how you feel that night, but you kind of sit back and go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, this is going to be printed. It's forever. Bill Bruford said that, that you know when you record, recording is forever. So you you know, sometimes it's probably healthy to think about, to think about how you want to project this song. The composers yeah. I'm talking about. So when I work with people, the composers let me know what their intention is. So either um, we let it go or we t we we tighten it down. Um, you know, I, I played the Attitude song with Steve Vai, and so it was comfortable. We started out with a with a click for reference, just as a reference, so the de, you know, so the delays would be in time and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you know, he we we determined, and then he said to me, you know, shut that thing off at at this point. I was like, okay. So I I, I don't really care. I don't really care one way or the other. I'm really gravitating off of what the real musicians want and so and so you know by by learning what they feel i have a profound respect for doing that job <clears throat> whether it's learning how to keep the time on a grid uh more solid uh maybe not maybe accelerando decelerando because it's part of the music or yeah. maybe just kind of let it just kind of let it do what it's going to do that night if that's what's intended if that's what's intended. I, I don't care one way or the other. So, yeah, real musicians are, okay. So which is your definitive invitation for the people to come over at Drumageddon? So you're, you have to invite people uh, with a, a sort of slogan or uh, something like that to intrigue them, you know, and come over. <laughs> come to Armageddon to have your mind blown at your own potential. It really is about you. Um, I'm just a messenger. That's all I am as a messenger. 
don't see me as this thing that's on a poster or on a on a stage i am a messenger this day and it is about you that's why i'm there i'm there to help you learn profound profoundly uh powerful methods at bettering yourself if if you would like to just really saving years of time even if it's just a comfort that you know that this stuff will help you become who you would like to become that's it so come to realize your own potential it's just yeah. a great experience for, for me and everybody so far great mike so see you there thanks very much for your time and yeah. of course i cannot salute you before you say something in italian to me <laughs> Oh boy! All right, <laughs> wait a minute. I, I, I'm my my drop down menu. No, 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 no. I just, with all the passion in the world, have to say, linguini alle vongole. Yes, that's the best. Thank you so much, Mike. Have a nice day, and thanks very, very much for your time. And you as well, Barbara. And, and thank thank you for the wonderful questions and thank you for having me. I hope you Thanks. Hope, I hope you had fun and people have fun. I Let's, did. Much appreciated. Ciao, Mike. Ciao. Ciao. Love Bye. you. Ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao.